Hello, everyone. We're on the verge of something exciting with the CGTF. We're, uh, we're doing our pilot episode of uh, CGTF Professional Profiles. And we're starting with Jeff Howe. Um, he's, he's one of our longtime members. Uh, he's a master instructor. He's our number one facilitator. And he's national director of education. So, Jeff, Thanks for volunteering to be the guinea pig, so to speak. Uh, but I think these uh, profiles are going to help our organization kind of promote uh, one another uh, within the organization. It's going to show the diversity, but it's going to also show, uh, hopefully, the different backgrounds of people that get into the CGTF. The use of our YouTube and video has been fairly popular with the uh, with the audience. So I thought, you know what, this is, uh, this is one more way of connecting and making the world smaller. So anyways, welcome, Jeff. Yeah, good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, I, think it's, so I think it's a great idea as you keep, uh, keep trying to push the, the CGTF and enhance it and improve it. And I think it's all fantastic. Yeah, so we'll be looking for other uh, other volunteers that want to come out and answer a few questions. Uh, Jeff and I just talked a little bit before we got started here. The ideal uh, scenario is these videos will, will last between 10 and 10 and 20 minutes. Any longer than that, and people kind of tune out. So we're going to get right to the nuts and bolts. But Jeff, uh, my records show that you were certified in 1996. Yes. Uh, where where was that? That was at Hidden Lake uh, Golf Course in Burlington. Oh, nice. My home, my hometown. Yeah. So that would have been probably in the first or second group uh, ever when the CGTF uh, came to Canada and was established. I would think. Yeah, I believe so. I think it was the second the second year. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you got your master's again at Hidden Lake in 2005 because I, I was in your class and yeah. I remember that very well. And we we were in a we were in a real class of uh, celebrities actually. Uh, yeah, we were for yeah. sure. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. So, what what's your current role um, outside of the work you do with us? Uh, what do you do uh, kind of as full time work? So I'm working here at Hidden Lake uh, Golf Course. I spend some morning hours on the turf team uh, for a few hours every morning. And then I start my teaching coaching using around 11 a.m. Uh, up until 7, 7.30 in the evening, Monday to Friday. Uh, weekends are just usually a few hours of coaching in the mornings and afternoons off. So nice. Yeah. So you do get a little break. A little break, yes. Yeah. Uh, how, how long have you played golf? Did you start golfing well before 1996? No, I didn't. No, uh, my background was in uh, contact and collision sports. <laughs> yeah. uh, golf really wasn't cool when I was a kid. Um, so I didn't start till late. Um, when I was with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the 1980s, we had privileges to play at the, uh, at the city run golf courses. And uh, one of the players at that time, one of the skilled players, uh, Steve Stapler, skilled by a meaning wide receiver, uh, he really introduced me into golf. And he, he and I would go out in the twilight hours. And uh, he, was, he was really instrumental, as well as uh, former National Hockey League player Harry Howell. And uh, we would go up just north of here to Burlington Springs, where we, again, we had privileges. And uh, yeah, I truly got bitten by the golf bug, uh, but it wasn't till later uh, in my in my years. So didn't didn't grow up playing it at a young age, but certainly fell in love with it uh, once yeah. once I started to understand it. Now, do you still enjoy playing? I do. I do enjoy enjoy playing. Uh, I have had a, a number of injuries and ailments and joint replacements, so I'm, I'm rather limited. Um, and then with the busy schedule, it makes it does make it difficult to get out and play. But I do try to play home every night, and by that I mean because I I live and work here at Hidden Lake, and so uh, after teaching on the range, I usually get in my golf cart and I play 
10, 11, 12, 13, and then I'm right back in my backyard. So I play home um, kind of every night. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are jealous. <laughs> They'd love to play four <laughs> holes every day, you know, kind of thing. Uh, that's that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, in, in your golf career, teaching, um, what are you most proud of? You've been doing it a long time, so. I have, yeah. I think it's, um, I'm proud that I have a fairly recognized name in the community, in the area. Um, my, you know, my shtick is how to golf and it kind of uh, resonates with, um, with people in the community. Um, and I guess growing up here and having a sports background, yeah, and I'm, all, I'm proud of that. And people certainly like to pass my name along, word of mouth, um, which is really a nice kind of feeling to have that people feel highly of you, that they recommend you to, to their family and to their friends or colleagues. You definitely have a, a positive reputation and you've been nothing but uh, amazing with our, our people and certifying them and you know, uh, I talk to people all the time that, that say, oh, is Jeff, how's Jeff doing? How's Jeff doing? So, Great. You know, well, people, thank you. well, yeah, from the past, uh, you know, that got certified five years ago or 10 years ago, yeah. um, they, they really do, you know, uh, you know, appreciate the effort and the time you put into the certification weeks for them. So that's pretty well, thanks. Well, that, that's a big part of it too, you know, is, is, you know, it's about helping others, whether it's our CGTF candidates and then future uh, members to, you know, just to the local players, helping people achieve their goals, whether it's certification or, you know, becoming a better putter, chipper or player in general. And those are the things that I kind of, you know, I get my kicks from and seeing people happy and sending me little emails or texts that, they, you know, they they played super well and they're doing better and they're enjoying the game. I'm always amazed at the um, relationships that are created in golf. Um, you know, I, I have my own relationships with, with like my best friend, Clint, that I talk about all the time. It just wouldn't have happened uh, in any other capacity other than golf. Like it, it's just one of those things that um, golf brings people together that, you know, are, are kind of like-minded, but uh, maybe wouldn't be on a path that their their paths would cross kind of thing. And I think of, you know, um, a couple of guys at the Bay of Quinney Golf Club that I was, when I was there, I saw them all the time. They played all the time and one got really sick and uh, he, he ended up passing away this year. Goodness. Um, yeah. And he, he was an older gentleman and and uh, so one of his best golf buddies uh, quit golf. And oh. it, to me, it was just like, it was so sad. It was like, yeah. he couldn't go to the golf course because of that relationship. And again, two guys that really hadn't really had any connection be before running into each other at the Bay of Quinney you know, right. maybe 10, 15 years ago. And in 10, 15 years, they become inseparable. And, uh, yeah. you know, those relationships uh, with their students or with their golf buddies or they, they, they're pretty special. And sometimes we, we don't remember that. What what uh, advice would you give somebody getting into their journey, you know, of uh, in the golf industry? What what would be your best advice? Are you talking about to a, a future <clears throat> CGTF member? Sure. Somebody yeah. somebody coming in the organization want to teach. Uh, yeah. Um, I would strongly recommend that you try to keep things very simple and not too complicated. Um, I'm doing lots of reading uh, as always and thinking about how we communicate golf to students and, and we all know and see on the internet and uh, magazines and books how highly technical golf is and has become. 
Um, you know, there's, they say that golf is more diagnosed than some medical conditions out there. And I find working now indoors that uh, with the use of more data, that people are just getting over inundated with numbers and trying to fit into a specific technique or a specific position in their golf swing when um, what we should really just try to do is create a swinging motion to, to that student's best ability uh, and not trying to contrive or try to emulate others. It's nice to show comparisons to tour players, but realistically, sometimes that's pretty impossible to do. I had a gentleman just the other day I'd given a lesson to, and he's in his uh, mid seventies, his lower back issues. And um, he came into the indoor facility just to practice. And he says, oh, I'm gonna come in and beat some balls. And I said, no, Brian, you're, you're gonna practice with deliberation like we did, you're gonna have one sort of thought process. He says, oh, but I was watching, I was watching stuff on Matthew Wolf. And I'm thinking, Brian, <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's gonna happen. I, I understand where we're going with it, but let's, let's you know, not complicate things here at, at your age and stage of your life. So, um, all this information on the on the World Wide Web is great, but again, does it pertain to that individual? And how can we really keep it simple by communication and showing and demonstrating and getting it to resonate in in that person's mind, whether he's a coach or a player? Um, so I think that's the trick for for our candidates and for our teaching pros is. You know, how do we keep it simple, keep it relative and uncomplicated? Um, we all know we don't teach a lot of any tour professionals. Um, so let's make the game fun. Let's keep it fun and keep it realistic. Again, people's perception of golf is, is they, they think too much and they try too hard and then it, it becomes frustrating. And, and we need to do a really good job of trying to, again, simplify it and um, just make sure they understand their swing motion. I think that's wonderful. Like, we get so focused on what the best players in the world are doing. Um, not to go on too much in your interview, but I, I taught a student this year he was with his wife and we were doing some chipping and, you know, we had some seven irons, some nine irons, and we were doing a little bump and run, keeping the ball low, you know, a very repetitive shot. And then all of a sudden he comes back to me a week later and says, you know, I watched the tour all weekend. I didn't see anybody chipping with a seven iron or a nine. iron, And it's like, well, they, they might practice just a bit more than you. And they might be on a little faster greens than you're playing. They might be having a softer golf ball. Yeah. And they, they might have higher skill. Uh, so, you know, it, it's kind of sometimes your, your job to reel people in. And uh, I'm sure you, you do a lot of that. Um, one bonus question here before we wrap up. Uh, you are very astute in, in reading books and uh, following different theories. Do you have a favorite book? That we should all know about because of all time it doesn't have to be current or uh, I know and I, I'm gonna throw a little teaser in right now before you answer that um, you're gonna in the in the spring we're gonna do a little uh, book report uh, yeah, yeah. so that that's one of our continuing education Monday night sessions is uh, Jeff's gonna do a, a little modern um uh, book report uh, sort of speak and I'm not going to elaborate any more on that but uh, a favorite book of all time um I'm going to go with the inner game of golf it's very similar to the inner game of tennis but um more golf again it's into psychology and the mindset and uh, I think that's where a lot of people get trapped is again I don't like to use this phrase out loud to everybody but it's uh you know um, people who get so angry and upset with golf really don't have the skill sets 
to get that mad. So they have to understand the balance, you know, of what they're capable of doing and then not go so, be so hard on themselves and get frustrated. And that's, you know, one of the downsides of golf because it is rather a challenging game. So yeah, the inner game of golf. That's uh, right. yeah. Fantastic, Jeff. Um, now I think uh, any, any final thoughts? Uh, we definitely, you know, um, appreciate your time. And uh, I think this probably is going to turn out pretty well. I think you did. A yeah, good no, I think this, this is a great idea again um, that, that you have thought of. And I think it's wonderful. We need to get our, our members and our membership more engaged and have more open forms of dialogue and communicate and let's learn and share and continue that pathway of uh, improving ourselves and our and our students so yeah, i think it's wonderful what you've done mark yeah glad to be on board jeff thanks so much for uh, coming in this morning and doing this video and uh, we look forward to someone else in that seat uh, yeah. virtually we can we can interview anybody in Canada or the world, really. Uh, sure. If you're a CGTF member, we'd love to hear your story and what, what you would like to share. So until next time, thanks. Great. Everybody thanks. stay safe. Cheers and thanks again, Mark. Thank you.